talk about something you probably already know about, the Fletcher Munson or loudness curve. Oh, yeah. I've mentioned that many times. Yeah, I, I read up on it this morning. I spent the whole morning reading up on it, and it's a really technical thing. But I'm just trying to break it down into what is it and what does it mean to us. Long story short, what the Fletcher Munson curve is, Fletcher and Munson were two guys that worked for Bell Lab in the 1930s, and they studied the ear and the way that we hear. And the thing is that we don't hear as far as our equalization, like our bass, mids, and treble. Everybody has a mm -hmm. EQ on their home stereo. You know, you can turn up the bass or turn up the treble. The tone, yeah. yeah, the way that the ear actually works is as it gets louder, we hear more low end and high end. Right. And, and it was called the Fletcher Munson curve, but in the 50s, they redid the study uh, that Fletcher Munson did and got some more accurate readings on the human ear. And so actually the politically cor correct name now is the equal loudness contour. And long story w short, what that means is if you listen to something soft, you don't hear as much bass or treble. Right. And if you turn it up, actually the bass and the treble get louder right. more drastically than the mids. Right. And so what does that mean to us as far as mixing engineers or if we're mixing a record, what does that mean? Because if we turn, if we listen at a really low volume, we hear almost no bass and no treble. Mm -hmm. And as we turn it up, we get more treble and more bass. Actually, most mixing engineers, from what I read on the web, mixing and mastering engineers, when they listen to a song, they listen at it between 85 and 90 decibels, mm -hmm. which is about um, listening to loud. a home stereo. Yeah, that's pretty loud, too. Yeah. yeah, it's a little, it's kind of like listening to a home stereo a little loud. And I have one of those um, uh, dB, uh, what do you call them? Meters, dB meters. meters. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's radio shack, yeah. shack. I have it right on my console. Yeah. And I kind of put it right where I, my head and my ears are to see where what the decibel levels yeah. are. And I, it's usually around 90 to 110. Yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 uh, long story short, what people listen to their home stereo uh, is is actually coincidentally where the EQ is flat. Mm -hmm. So when you're listening to like 85 or 90 decibels, which is a home stereo a little bit loud, you're actually hearing it the way it really is. You're hearing the bass and the treble the way it actually mm -hmm. is on the recording. But as you turn down the volume, the low end and the treble, the bass and the treble decrease more rapidly. Mm -hmm. So when you listen at low volumes, you're really just hearing mid range. So most mixing engineers and mastering engineers listen at that volume because it's flat, but I would recommend that you check your mixes at all volumes. Um, I listen to my stuff loud because I mix a lot of hip hop and rock and everybody listens to it loud, but I do check my mixes at lower volumes mm -hmm. just to see if you can hear the bass and the treble as you turn it down. Now I'm still using um, uh, Auratones, Cubes. Auratones, uh, yeah, Auratones were made to stimulate AM radios or little speakers inside your cheap TVs. I love them. I don't use those so much anymore because most of these come with like stereo built in now right. or like decent sized speakers. Right. That was more when people were listening to AM radios and TVs with small speakers in them. Um, I would recommend personally that you listen to your mix when you're mixing it at the volume that most people will be listening. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to rock, you know, you want to check it while it's loud. Or mm -hmm. if you're listening to mm -hmm. hip hop, you might want to check it while it's loud, but you want to check it at a lower volume. Um, some home stereos have a button called a loudness button. Right. And what that loudness button does is when you're listening at a soft volume and you turn on the loudness button, it actually compensates, it actually boosts the bass and the treble and compensates for what you're not hearing. So actually when you turn on the loudness button, you're hearing the recording more accurately. Um, but I'd recommend that you check your mixes at all volumes. Check it at a low volume and listen to the bass and the treble. You notice when you turn your mix down so low that you can barely hear it, you almost only thing you hear is the vocals because that's in that mid rangey. Mm -hmm. So I recommend that you check at all volumes, but specifically check it at the volume that most of your listeners will be listening at. And you have to be aware of the fact that the louder you're listening to, the more bass and treble you're hearing. That's yeah. that, that's probably the single most important thing to be aware of is that is that you're hearing it. And and one of the reasons I think that there's so much topping on on uh, pop R and B uh, hip hop music today yeah. 
is because people listen mix at such a loud level yeah. that after a while your top end starts to disappear and you think you're not hearing as much hi hat and and top end and you keep cranking it up and cranking yeah. it up and uh, and that's one of the reasons why I don't listen very loud. Actually, actually, the the according to the uh, equal loudness curve, we lose more low end than we lose treble. We lose like. In order to, when we're listening at a low volume, we have to boost the bass by 64 times just so our ears will hear it actually the way the recording actually is. Mm -hmm. And the treble, we have to boost by about 16 times. So at a low volume, when you turn on that button that said loudness, it'll boost the bass by about 64 times and the treble by about 16 times, which means now you're hearing the recording the way it actually is. Because mm -hmm. like I said, when you listen to a recording at a low volume, it loses bass and treble. I was once told that uh, listening to it at a low level with uh, on the aritones, that the bass ought to be just loud enough to do a takedown, meaning a, you know to to be able to write out the bass pattern. Oh. You can hear it well, just it, enough to hear what the notes are. The thing about oritones is they're smaller speakers, and the thing yeah. that when you mix, we talk about bookshelf speakers. Most right. most speakers that are on a bookshelf, most small speakers. <clears throat> don't reproduce any low end below 80 hertz anyway, mm -hmm. which means if you're mixing and you're turning up some really loud sub bass, most people aren't going to hear that anyway. But you should it's only have on loud, larger speakers that you would hear you, that. You should have, um, if you you want half decent mixes, you should have uh, cubes, uh, bookshelf, modern yeah. bookshelves. Like I use the Tannoys, and yeah. and larger ones uh, like I use K Rocks. I, and uh, you know that that give you you know a little bit of. Mm, and I mm. have I have a subwoofer in my studio and mm -hmm. a subwoofer in my car, mm -hmm. and I check it both with the subwoofer on and both with the subwoofer off. Right. And I check it at low volumes and at loud volumes, and I I want to make sure that there's enough flow and then treble that it'll work at a low volume, in and case somebody's thing, listening in an elevator or something, you know. And the other thing I would suggest, uh, <laughs> and I know you've suggested this before, <laughs> is to mix. Uh, a being a, 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 a CD that that you you know and you're familiar that's, with and you like the way it sounds. That's the number one tip that yeah. I can give anybody. And when I started doing that, that's when it took my mixes to the goal. Mm -hmm. What I do is I pick my favorite mixes. Like right. I, I have some pink mixes I like, some black eyed peas, and I'll listen to the low end and the treble, and I'll compare my mix against their mix, and I'll try to get the low end and the treble in about the same volume. Right. And that, that's really the best way to do it. You find a mix that works, and, and you get about the same low end and treble as that mix. All that's right. the best way to do it. Multi-platinum. My yeah. windows are going to shake is what I want to know. How much your windows are going to shake? Well, I don't live next to you, so I wouldn't know that. <laughs> yeah, but like I said, you should check you should check your check on small speakers and also if you can check on big speakers. Right. Because big speakers reproduce lower end. And and the other thing I would say too, which I do is I, I is I burn a copy of what I think is the final mix and I'll go out and I'll play it in the car. I do I do that too. Yeah. And like I said, I have a subwoofer in the car and I try it with the woofer on and the woofer off because right. if all my low end is deep and I shut off the woofer, I have no bass. I'm right. okay. There are people without a subwoofer are going to have no bass. Right. So you want to have enough bass that it'll work in small speakers, but you want to have the low end proper in some sub subwoofers too. Okay. The other thing you can use yeah. is software called the Spectrum Analyzer, which is just yeah. basically a bunch of meters that shows you how much low end and treble you have. Mm -hmm. And if you look at a pink mix and then look at yours, whether you're listening loud or soft, the spectrum analyzer is always going to look the same. The truth. Right. It's always the truthful. I, I carry one around. They call it the bantalizer. When I when I pull up a spectrum anal analyzer, because I look at my meters, I say oh, I know exactly how much low end I have, regardless of regardless. And of you the can volume. see literally see the curve. Literally, the yes, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can literally see how much low end and treble you have. That's a multi platinum analyzer. <laughs> All right, thank you, multi platinum <laughs> producer. You gotta get so sick of Give us your uh, uh, email address oh, and website. I want to mention too, we're doing a lot of free live seminars and and lessons online All right. different Q&A's and stuff so go to recording lessons uh, myspace.com slash recording lessons or email me at recording lessons at myspace.com we're going to have a lot of free Q&A's you should come